We move our attention to South Africa, where a new day is about to begin in court for the so-called Blade Runner, Oscar Pistorius, on trial for allegedly murdering his girlfriend. Dramatic moments in court as the night of the crime is reenacted by law enforcement. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Pretoria with the latest. I mean, further back from with the repeated hacks of a cricket bat, the prosecution tried to pound holes in Oscar Pistorius's version of events the night he killed his model girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp. I'm meaning further back, my lady. In his bail hearing, Pistorius stated when he realized it was his lover, not intruders locked inside that bathroom, he battered it down with this bat. A police forensics expert took the stand for the prosecution, asking to demonstrate how the door was smashed in. That door is crucial evidence, says ABC's chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. It tells the story of who was where, where the bullets came from, where Oscar Pistorius was when he swung this cricket bat. And prosecutors believe that it helps demonstrate he's lying. He says he went back to his bedroom after the shooting, screaming for help, puts his prosthetic legs on, goes back and then beats the door down. Prosecutors say that's not what the evidence and that door shows. The self-styled fastest man on no feet, who was now being painted as a liar, a murderer. For nearly a decade, he'd been an inspiration to South Africans and to millions across the world. Pistorius was born without fibulas, so to aid his mobility, his parents had his legs amputated below the knee when he was just a child. It was kind of like, you know, you've got prosthetic legs, that's very nice. Your brother's going to put on his shoes. You put on your legs and off you go. Pistorius never wallowed, even when his mother tragically died when he was just 15. With those prosthetic legs, he would go on to dominate the Special Olympics in Athens in 2004. Oscar Pistorius is flying away from all of them. Then in 2012, after years of lobbying, he was allowed to compete with able-bodied athletes in the London Games, elevating the Olympian to almost mythological status. And then the country's inspiration fell for a blonde beauty and a reality star. It seemed like a storybook love affair. She was happy as far as I knew she was happy. And the country's royal couple played well in the tabloids. Their pictures splashed everywhere, their passion seemingly evident. Very quickly, Reva Steenkamp started spending more and more time in his home in the Silverwoods development. And then, Valentine's Day 2013, that shooting. Steenkamp was dead and Pistorius was charged with murder. And for the past eight days in court, the Blade Runner has sat there on the front bench. The prosecution describing him as an egomaniac, obsessed with fast cars, guns, and perhaps his girlfriend. But from the start, he insisted he was innocent. Not guilty, my lady. He's been solitary, but never still. So often anguished, the runner's hands clasping his ears and head, the head sagging to his chest. As far as she was lying there... And on Friday and Monday, a visceral reaction to the pathologist's testimony. I tried to open the airway and to look for any signs of life. First came the heaving, then the retching. This bucket slid over to him, then that handkerchief covering the clammy face. Earlier in the trial, we heard the ear witness accounts of the screams heard from the Pistorius' home late that night. She had petrifying screams. I heard that female screaming fearfully. And then we saw him today, craning his neck to watch Colonel Johannes Vermeulen's testimony, those frequent swings at the bullet-ridden door. But under cross-examination... Has he done tests from different distances? It wasn't the door that seemed to be dismantled, but police credibility. You can just do that for me with the bat in your hand. His story says attorney Barry Rue asking Colonel Vermeulen first to get to his knees and trying to swing from there. The defense is trying to show that they messed up this investigation, that the evidence wasn't cared for, that there may have even been corrupt police officers involved in this case. The prosecution and defense have two very different theories of what happened the night Pistorius shot and killed Steenkamp. So ABC News built a life-size model of Pistorius' home based on the floor plans released in court. That's ABC's Amy Robach and Dan Abrams. Prosecutors believe there was a fight, that witnesses could hear the fight from outside these windows that were open. They believe Riva then flees to the bathroom. He comes around to this side of the bed, grabs his gun. And then goes after Riva. And then chases her into the bathroom. 
Pistorius fires four times. Three of those shots hit Steenkamp in the hip, elbow, and in the head. The defense insists Pistorius fired his 9mm pistol at what he thought was an intruder. But even his version of events, in which he insists he's innocent of murder, could still put him in hot water. Even if you mistakenly kill someone in terms of our law, that 1% negligence is sufficient to sustain a conviction on culpable homicide. Culpable homicide carries up to a 15-year prison sentence here. Now, Pistorius has walked out this door eight times before through this gauntlet of media and onlookers, but today may have been his toughest day in court. But outside, every day, he's greeted with rock star squeals. And this is the first time that you've ever been able to see him. Yesterday, we caught up with a group of girls there for their first glimpse. Channel 199 is an Oscar Pistorius channel, and you watch it basically all day long, right? 24 hours of Oscar Pistorius. Can you get enough of Oscar Pistorius news? No. We got an inside look at that channel, pumping out 15 hours of all things Pistorius every day. John Webb is one of its anchors. How obsessed are South Africans with this story? I think they're becoming more obsessed. Uh, this is all new territory for, for many South Africans. Uh, we haven't had this kind of access to court proceedings before, uh, especially around a criminal trial of this significance. So I think the more it goes along, I think the more interested people are becoming. And it'll peak when the Blade Runner himself finally takes the stand to explain how he took his love's life. I'm Matt Gutman for Nightline in Pretoria, South Africa. Our thanks to Matt Gutman for that. We will, of course, stay on the story.